Hello, so since I am now living in my third state, I thought I'd start with a little poem about moving. Um, Table Queen. The acorn squash grow wrong in California. You can tell they came from the earth because they taste bitter and lightly poisoned, contaminated by some row of cows imprisoned in a shed. In Ohio, you can tell because they taste well rested, beauty sleeping under a coverlet of snow half the year. They are sweet as a fawn and only 99 cents, even when nothing else germinates. Orange because they hold on to the fire of their cooking. When I eat them, I leave the oven open one inch to let out the heat. I was given this advice when I moved here, along with a giant box of sweaters. I itch under the sweaters, three or four at a time. My friends like to watch me unpeel them and call me an onion. I like onions and I like being warm. I like cooking the acorn squash until its jacket peels right off. The squash is willing and impious full of knowledge and vitamin A. My eyes become so vitamin strong. I get visions of home and miss California. Um, and then for the second poem, I've been sort of like meditating recently on whether like my worldview would be different if I were raised with like any metaphysics except for like colonial Catholicism. Um, so this one is Connolly. It's simple teleology, the God who's no good, killing the gods with no power. What I know of the truth is only what I am able to imagine. Did they preserve enough wheat to offer the Eucharist or slice one thin of a potato for every churchgoer? What anyone knew for sure, they threw into the ocean or buried for fertilizer. There must have been people in England who prayed for the blight. I learned my family crest in a genealogy library hours away from home. A woman who shared my name tried to teach birds to sing a symphony by caging them with recordings of one thin of the music, a few notes for each. The birds never learned to sing the music. I live because my ancestors ate green tomatoes and every psalm of the cage. Um, and then for my next few poems, I'll be reading from a chat book I'm working on called Dream Job, um, where every poem is titled Dream Job. Um, so Dream Job one. Once I dreamed of growing up to live in a loft with an electronic typewriter, useful to no one except the college board and my own sickness. Now I'm a flushed bicep, shoveling coal into the boiler of someone else's idea. For eight and a half hours a day, I'm small enough to curl into a bottle and glow to eat sugar out of a thimble, to be left bird or right bird, clasping a necklace under someone else's bouffanted hair. In the workroom, I feed the clock paper squares, scratch it under the second hand, give it a coup to reinforce its one followable tune. I assumed the dial tone would make me wicked thought answering always one of only three questions would lengthen my teeth and stain my mouth red, thought one side of my brain would become a half cup of soup, the other a half sandwich, 
thought I'd be interrogating the public bathroom small and helpless mirror, asking who's the weariest of them all. Monday through Friday, my parents' useless air is the next caller's genie of the lamp. I make everything happen on every wish but my own. And here's another dream job. Applicant, expect to be compensated commensurate to your experience. We prefer you qualify by having experience in what you want to experience. Candidate, when did you first realize your passion for content coordination, for integrating forefront digital solutions, for segmenting the market like a clip art pie? Here, we will only macro manage you. We will remove the roof of your office if it gives you enough room to grow. Please open your mouth to snack on a bird or a wandering cloud of beetles, our treat. Prospect, we will never assign you a number on a scale of one to 10. We will only evaluate you narratively on a scale of strongly disagree to strongly agree. How strongly do you agree with the following statements? I am an independent thinker. I am a collaborative thinker. My biggest flaw is that I am too punctual. I misrepresent myself in job interviews. Contender, what is your availability on each day this upcoming calendar year? Would you please sign on your availability? Would you please initial every available date? Would you please sign for mandatory arbitration? Please initial each courtroom on this map of our jurisdiction. Aspirant, would you please sign your job description under other duties as a sign to signify your promise to fulfill any responsibility? Once a season, we conduct seances of board emeriti, which sometimes manifest new duties. What will you do if your responsibilities compete? What will you do if your priority of the weekly report and your priority of the quarterly report are competing? As an exercise, imagine they are both baby birds and you have only one beetle to feed them. Petitioner, how would you describe the culture of your previous company? How about your ideal company culture? Suitor, how would you describe the culture of your home? We prefer employees from open concept homes. Here, we're like a family. Okay, um, another dream job. I get a job giving children their dreams. I unspool one thread of a nebula and pack it in a pneumatic tube. The dreams whoop to earth. Their majesty makes the assignments. Astronaut, marine biologist, artist, basketball player, singer, detective, game maker. The children who dream of sports have unusually dense bones. The future race car driver drivers have never gotten sick on a roller coaster. Their majesty assigned me veterinarian as a child because I got sick all the time and stayed home from school. I wasn't properly socialized and rewatched the dramas of animal surgeons on TV. Then I became allergic to fur and kept imagining a poodle getting hit by a car, me sneezing on her legs open wound. Their majesty has never been to earth. They've never seen anyone age. They don't understand disappointment or puberty. I break it to their majesty. The International Space Station is not very big. And for every painter in a gallery, there are 10 living under someone else's stairs. The people who grow up wanting to make games go on to sell facial recognition technology. 
Then the detectives use that technology to lock people away and keep them from jobs. It would be better for everyone to thrive in artificial light and want never to be promoted. Better for them to feel good with a broom in the hand and a customer in the face. I don't want to know what the earth is like, their majesty says, assigning another inventor. Not even looking at me, having never looked up this whole time to see what they were doing. Um, how much more time do I have? Shrug. That assumes I was timing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll read a few more. Um, okay. I'm going to read this other dream job about my partner who's right here. Hello. Uh, dream job. He comes home out of breath, out running a trail of customers who yell, excuse me, and lead bloodhounds that sniff for his shoes and the liquid of his blisters. He'll follow paw prints back into the store tomorrow. For now, for three hours, he calls me only ma'am. He comes home paper thin from the ankles up with 200 pounds of blood in his feet. I massage his heels to re-inflate him. He comes home with pockets full of old price tags, someone else's hexes scribbled on their blank sides. He removes his uniform shirt. Above his heart, his name remains tattooed in its red and white circle. He comes home aching for sleep. In his sleep, he yells out, take that Kmart. And I imagine in that world, he wears a retail store mecha suit. There's an explosives aisle strapped to one leg. The Costa chemicals on the other are ready for a roundhouse kick. He socks the Kmart right in its bloody red A. When it falls, he keeps whatever spills out, half a lifetime of canned goods, a mattress that unwinds his back, shirts in every color except the one terrible color. Every night I imagine he gets whatever we were deprived of that day, keeping myself awake with the euphoria of dreaming. We have everything we need. If I sleep, the manager will come again to hover over his ear, cupping one clean hand whispering to teach him someone else's goals. Okay. All right. And then here's a, uh, a dream job poem that's kind of about tech, because now I'm one of those people I sold out and I work in technology now um, and I have no regrets, but <laughs> here we go. Um, my Facebook feed returns to the same video about mortuary science featuring a young woman with exactly black hair and red lipstick, like the girls I crushed on all my public school life who fixes the dead and finds her fulfillment. I've watched it at least four times to self-soothe before falling asleep. It makes me wonder if my true career trajectory is painting on cream made special for skin gone cold. At my last funeral, my uncle was embalmed badly and it was clear which side of his face bruised and with a piece of ear missing, he had laid on as he died. Truthfully, this is all I could be capable of doing. If I cannot work with my hands, then I will learn all I can about jobs that need hands. 
when my partner says he saw a cool video today about indigo farms, I've read that article too. It makes me afraid to discuss anything I've ever known. Algorithms cueing us into content, the way colleges cue all 1800 majors into the same dozen middle management day jobs and I'd failed even that. My job requiring no management, nor degree, nor middling responsibility whatsoever. I joke that poets will be some of the last people replaced by AI because we don't trust robots enough to give them bipolar disorder quite yet, per Torin. Um, how inexpensive a robot's death will need to be before their creators are willing to admit they made them all harsh glare and all harsh rust. They will not build the robots until replacing them costs less than either of our funerals. How cheaply we will burn. How too tight with gasoline all these vessels feel even on us born to carry them. The robots, they will not need to burden themselves with rocks before they walk into the ocean to dive. Until then, they will write about bathtubs they are not allowed to have, their feelings toward the delivery drone and how, like a bird, she is made light enough to fly by the hollowing out of everything unnecessary. No one will blaspheme their hands on these robots until no one needs to be forgiven for anything. What they could have done differently will fit next to check boxes. No one will have to change out of their neutral blue polos on a Sunday. On Monday, maybe someone will turn a penny-sized dial a bit to the left. No one will bother with the bipolars until these creators can go scuba diving, take pictures of themselves in a new kingdom, resurrected coral grafting, the self-drowned robots, a new neon skin. If our bones end up sunk there, no one will notice them. So covered they will be with tedious barnacles. These pictures will accompany Christmas in July cards. These were my bodies, they will say, thumbs up and shudder. I gave them up. Okay, and I'll just um, end with a short Ars Poetica so I can also hear all the other lovely voices here. Um, what it's good for. Can't turn it upside down and shake it for a coin. Won't fit a collar or a saddle or a good pair of shoes. Can't count its points and mount it in a spare room. I tell it what to do and it mouths the words back at me. It mocks with no lips, meat or heat to mock with a poem. Where there is something to say, there is something to say badly. What's it even good for? Besides drinking the lighter fluid and passing out with the fuel wood. You'll be amazed what I give away for 20 seconds of light. All my silence and anything your dominant hand touched. Any words you put on my tongue, I'll burn them. And thank you all so much for being here. I'm kind of bummed I won't be there to see at least one in-person reading at the Ugly Mug, but <laughs> Um, I'll be back to visit at some point. <laughs>